Come down, three, two, one, and then go. Please don't go on one. That guy jumping around? Yeah, that's me. Behind me is Australia's most iconic landmark, Uluru. And yeah, that's the start line of a marathon. You're probably wondering, how did I find myself in such a situation? Well, let me rewind a little, and I'll explain. Dom, nice. Why does it say average Dom? Right. The dog tag. <laughs> yes, nice. We've arrived in Uluru, the red center, and it is magical already to be here. It's 24 degrees, but it's not too hot because it's overcast, and we were starving when, upon arrival, so we went to the local IGA and we got this. We've received our race pack, checked into our hotel, which seems very, very cool. And then this afternoon, we're heading out on a little shakeout. Ready for your shakeout, average Dom? Do I look ready? No. I said I'm not allowed to talk negative, <laughs> so the answer is very good. I also but the feel real, really good. <laughs> but the real answer is not really good. Right, we've just gone for a shake out to feel what it feels like to run on the red dirt. And I'll tell you this, it's a little bit trickier than expected, but we'll see. I'm excited. I'm super excited. It was a beautiful run and we got to see Uluru. Um, legs are a tiny bit sore, so we'll rest tomorrow, wake up at sunrise, walk around, and then we should be feeling good for, for the Saturday morning race, but uh, I'm pumped. I'll try and catch you out there. Yeah, I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrified. I was, I was going to ask you if I can have a head start. <laughs> you should still be scared though. Yeah, yeah, if you win I'll give you $200. Okay, Cash deal. All right, night before the race. 
We just had our big carbo load dinner, uh, rice and pasta and spaghetti. Oh, triple whammy. And now we're just back in the hotel room, ready to uh, wrap up for the night, shower, get ready and get some well needed shut eye before tomorrow. We'll wake up, have some brekkie and then we'll be shuttled out to the race start line for the big race. Let's do it. Right, good night for now. Good morning. Good morning, it's race day. We're at the Buffet of Dreams and unfortunately, we have to go for something as lame and simple as honey and peanut butter on toast. There's eggs, there's hash browns, there's cookies, and all sorts of stuff, but we've got to be sent to race day, so we're just gonna eat one slice of toast, and coffee, and then we're getting shot back to the race. Let's go, race ready to go. All right, less than half an hour till kickoff. Look at this beautiful morning. Look where we are. Just red dirt everywhere. It's stunning. It's a little bit chilly, but not as cold as we might have thought it had been. And we've got views of the LaRue, the sun coming up. It's going to be fantastic. Three, two, one, and then go. Please don't go on one. Okay. On the count of three for the 2023 Australian Outback Marathon. Three, two, one. Hi, Average Dom. Hello, can you hear me okay? Testing, testing, I can hear you. Do I need to do this? No. Okay. <laughs> Hi. I heard you had a big race yesterday. I did. I had a very big race. What did? What race did you do? Uh, the Australian Outback Marathon. We're here in Uluru and it is a stunning place to run a race. Pretty incredible experience. So how did you feel going into the race? Good, very good. I had loaded up the night before. They had a carbo loading dinner, so I'd eaten rice and pasta and spaghetti and all sorts of stuff. Well, it was a buffet breakfast, but I could only have peanut butter and honey on toast because I know myself before a race and I can't eat too much on race morning. We got shuttled out to the start line um, pretty early, earlier than we'd normally get to a race. So it was beautiful when we got out because just that, that pre-dawn glow, which was beautiful. And we were there in the, the field of lights, so it was stunning. So can you tell us about the course? What was it like to run the Australian Outback Marathon? It was crazy. It was crazy, I'm not gonna lie. It was, it was a really tough course. Definitely the toughest I've ever done. I've only done three marathons, but I can imagine this being a lot tougher than the other races, a lot of other races around Australia. Um, the, the red dirt was 
an even bigger obstacle than I imagined. It was pretty thick red sand a lot of the time and, and, and sometimes for huge stretches of a few kilometers of thick sand. Um, but also some sand dunes with some incline which meant that you know it really slows down to the pace to almost stopping so you really have to press through those points. Um, it was a tough course. How did that affect your race plan? Luckily the race plan was relatively flexible because I went in kind of knowing this is going to be a very different race from say Gold Coast. So the pace that I set for myself wasn't rigid. It was a range of a pace between you know 4 and 4.15. I held back and I think I was doing about 4.08 for a good while. I don't know if it was 10, 15, 20 kilometers, but I really held that pace right between 4 and 4.15, which was the plan. I had in my head, look, as I went through, I did the first third, first 14 Ks within the hour, I did the second 14 Ks within another hour. So I was like, look, I can probably get sub three. But that third third, I was like, yeah, there's no chance. There's no chance that I'm gonna make that under under three hours. So I was like, throw that out the window. So yeah, at the end, I was just happy to, to kind of get it finished. I was kind of holding on. I lost the pace a little bit and finished in three hours and five minutes. So average Dom, oh, don't, don't be humble. Tell us what you came in the race. Uh, I came first. Can you show us your trophy? Yes. Oh look, he had it handy. <laughs> Sonic it doesn't see it as a thing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and how was that? Did you have any other competitors out there? What were the race dynamics like? What was it like to lead the pack? It was good. It was a different experience for me, I think, to to lead a race. I'm not used to leading and I guess I'm used to I don't know, sitting behind a pack or someone and letting them lead. It was good and difficult to be out there just by myself. You know, it can help to have people out there with you, pushing you when you're in pain and knowing that that person next to you is in pain and, and knowing that you have to keep going because you want to beat them. So it was a bit of a mental challenge being out there by myself. But on the other hand, I also enjoyed it. It was serene and it's nice leading a race. It was also nice to win a race. It's the first race that I've won and I know we're in the middle of the outback and it's not the New York Marathon or anything but it was still a good feeling to come through that line first and to be awarded first in a place it feels feels good. How do you fuel for this race? So I took four gels during this race. Um, the good part of that was they did give me a little boost. I also took more Powerade than I normally take at the water stations. I opted for Powerade a lot. The hardest part was the the rat poison, the, the cramp fix that I took. I put two out on the course, one at 25 and one at 31. And when I took the one at 25, I was cramping a little bit in the hip and I tried taking some of the, the cramp fix. And basically it was like an explosion of poison right to the back of my throat immediately. So I took a little sip and it exploded like a, like a, like a, like a painful shot of tequila or something, or like a really cheap, bad tequila, right in the back of the throat. And during a race, when you're hot and sweaty and trying to move fast, that is just not what you want to feel. So I felt like I almost uh, want to throw up. You can drop rubbish by the So I had to wait till the next one, and then I was like, get rid of that rat poison. 31 kilometer mark to pick up my next, um, my next drink, my next rat poison. And I was like, I have to come up with a better strap because it really makes me feel sick, but I need this. And so I went through that pattern. It was like three waters to one rat poison. And I was probably holding these two for a long while, probably like three kilometers because it was taking me that long to build up the courage to have another shot of the rat poison. So that was a bit tumultuous. In the end, I, I still am undecided how I feel about the cram fix, about the rat poison. Um, was it worth in the end? I'm not sure. So how do you feel post-race? It's the day after, how are you, how's your body handling it? I'm very sore. I woke up very sore. I went to sleep very sore. The legs were hurting in the night and I've been hobbling around today. Is there anything else you want to tell us about the race? Any I, secrets you're keeping? <laughs> I do. My, I think my proudest moment in the race is um, that my person, Ro, came third um, in the race and she ran a fantastic race. Um, can you turn the camera around? Oh wait, that's me. I'm just so, so proud. It's a second marathon ever and to come third 
Uh, it's just a phenomenal effort. Um, she said she was in pain out there, but she pushed through and I can't see, I can't wait to see what she can achieve on like a, on a fast course like Gold Coast. What's, what's next for average Dom Slim in marathons? Is this your last marathon as everyone was saying? <laughs> I kind of wish in a way. I always have these thoughts out there when I'm running and I'm, and I'm in maximum pain and I just go, I'm not built for marathons. I'm just, <laughs> which is a sooky thought because you're obviously doing it when you're, when you're at your worst. So I'm just like, oh, I love, I love the shorter races. I love the shorter distances. The marathon is just too long for me. But I absolutely have a bone to pick with the marathon. Like I've got more to give and I know that. I find the marathon a different beast than other running races. I definitely don't have as much fun. I'm not going to lie. When I'm out there, I wouldn't say this is pure joy running. Um, but it's a challenge and it's a different beast. And I, and I feel like, I feel like I'm not on top yet of the of the marathon and what I can achieve in the marathon, so I want to give more. The good thing is I'm kind of off for the rest of the year in terms of marathons. So I'm just going to focus on shorter distances, which is for me pure joy running. 10, maximum 14 kilometer races um, for the rest of the year. So that will be lovely. Um, and then next year I'll pick out maybe one or two marathons, put a proper marathon training in and really see what I can achieve on a course that looks nothing like this. Thanks for sharing, Average Dom. Oh, thanks for the interview. You're such a good interviewer. <laughs> I really appreciate it. You're awesome.